So astonished, I thought I would never forget, but now I kind of forgot which day it was that I began my craze over 3D era Grand Theft Auto. It was the Friday of either the 13th or 20th of September 2002. The previous night, I came across a cracked copy of GTA 3, which at that time was about to have its first anniversary since its PS2 release in October 2001. The download description said that it's the first 3D realization in GTA series ever. I liked the sound of it, causing me to download the game. The cracked game was about a couple hundred megabytes without the radio soundtracks. The download was initiated at the night of Thursday over dial-up internet connection. I kept my Pentium 4 desktop awake all night for the job. It was complete the next morning. Out of temptation. I launched the game for a glance before leaving for school. I watched the intro, drop off the hands-on messed up brother, crashed a few cars, and drove a tractor called Line Runner into the ocean. Immediately, I regretted, not because my insurance premium will then go up, none of those were my cars, but because of the whole duration in school, I couldn't get rid of the game in my head. After what seems to be the longest day of my entire college. I officially start playing the game at 7 or 8 p.m. till 3 or 4 a.m. I didn't stay up all night playing GTA. I wasn't like enthusiastic like how a college teenager typically should be. That's why I spent that weekend on GTA, not hanging out with friends. Heck, I didn't even play video games with friends. I was lame. Prior to Grand Theft Auto 3, I had played a few 3D open or somewhat open-world vehicular games, such as Driver, Interstate 76, Interstate 82, Midtown Madness 1 and 2. So the concept wasn't really that new to me. Especially in Interstate 82, the player could already swap vehicles during gameplay, even without the door opened, which was already ahead of its time conceptually and mechanically. But then. What made GTA 3 so special that I had to make a fan site about it in 2002 and a video again 20 years later? Because it was a well-constructed 3D open-world vehicular game like nothing I had ever seen before. It had developed an engaging story that I enjoyed. Controls were somewhat clunky and imprecise. On top of that, some missions were unreasonably hard, but that was okay since I played cheating. The graphic was rather cartoony compared to the photorealistic driver game, but that was fine to me as long as vehicle damages looked interesting. Remember, I said that my GTA was a cracked copy without radio soundtracks. After beating the game, I bought a real physical copy of the game in support for a sequel in the future, and then of course to have the radio soundtracks, which I would burn on a CD and play it when I drove. This way, I will feel like I again never left. I never left again. Later, I found some game mods that fans created for GTA 3. Most mods involved new vehicles with better 3D modeling and damage effects. I was immediately in. After a few implementations of mods, I found it a bit redundant to go through files, modify settings, and replace files for each car mod one at a time. When importing multiple mods, not to mention when creators tend to choose the same in-game vehicles for their mods to replace. As a result, I decided to get a bulk of car mods, rewrite a data file to have each mod assigned to a different in-game vehicle, edit a nicely laid-out instruction, and package everything into a package that players could replace a bunch of cars at once. With that in mind, I began building a fan site. I would take my one-year-old laptop to the campus cafeteria, find a table, grab a drink or lunch if it was about lunch, and work on a website similar to the concept of people writing stuff down on their laptop at the Starbucks. It was a trendy phenomenon about to become a thing for the now already past, then not so distant future of the mid to late 2000s. Nevertheless, if my parents knew that they sent me overseas and gave me a laptop just to let me build a website about a video game at the campus cafeteria, when I should have used the resource to run my midterm paper for English 1309 or to study for my upcoming midterm exam of political science 1336, I might have ended up somewhere else. As aforementioned, I built my GTA fan site on that particular laptop, which is still alive to this day. 
Originally, I wanted to restore the website back on my laptop and videotape the whole set with me giving a tour through each section of the website. To salute the 20th anniversary of the game, my website, the survival of the laptop, and nostalgia. Unfortunately, the retrieval of the laptop will put me through quarantine isolation twice, totaling 45 days based on disease control policies of the origin and destination city. That's not feasible. Here's what I will do. On my current computer, I will bring up a picture of the laptop in 2005, which is closer to 2002 when the website was built. Launch virtual Windows XP. Just post the XP window to the laptop screen on the picture. Voila, a virtual XP playing on a virtual PC virtually. The aesthetic of this website didn't age well by modern standard, but remember it was from the early 2000s when websites pretty much look like this. This is the name and banner of the website. This is my personal logo in use since 1999 till like 2005. This tiny information about screen resolution and browser version usually reside on the homepage of websites back then. This area shows the latest content update. The channel art equivalent website art features a few GTA characters alongside some car mods. Those guys provide website host, guest book, and visitor counter, and they have long gone. Even the official website that my Vice City advertisement links to. Is nowhere to be found. Yeah, coming this summer. I felt like I had been waiting for so long, as I remember watching relatives' kids that owned the PlayStation already playing Vice City, whereas I, a PC user, had to wait like extra six months into the summer of 2003. Even more so, when I pre-ordered Vice City, I got a free Radio Wave 103 soundtrack CD, which I played when I drove. This way, I will feel like I'm already playing the game. But that doesn't mean I take real-world traffic any lightly. One day, I was caught in a crossfire between an exit and a guy in his insurance company car without the car insurance. I was the one driving under influence of GTA Radio. Yet not only did I not break any traffic law, but also managed to steadily pull my car over on the shoulder after being hit. Luckily, no one was hurt, and the police behind me witnessed the whole thing. Everything sort of fell in place for me. I just had to inform my insurance agent about the accident in my own native language. I learned that cars in the real world are way more fragile than GTA 3 cars made of styrofoam. Despite the menu being in Chinese and English, the subpages and the contents are the same. I was born to be fair. The typography for English menu is a customized font by me, while the font for Chinese menu is merely a regular font equivalent to Arial round. Maybe I'm not so fair after all. Enter the preface. Simply put, it's an introduction and disclaimer written in my post ESL way of English writing. Profile is about my profile and system specs. This illustration mimics the poster of the 2001 movie Sawfish, but less crowded. Those two guys, girls, are characters of my comic. The name of the one to the right is Aqua Orange. She represents me by carrying out things I do, ideas I have, and stupid things I say in my creative universe. As here on this model car, clearly heavily influenced by GTA games, and there on the top left corner of my channel banner, why is she flying? Because she who represents me is a GTA fan like myself. Long story short, one day she has to borrow a car, the GTA fashion. The police are on her tail, although she doesn't have a tail. Because she doesn't have a tail, the police are no more. She sees a stacked boxes nearby. She goes in for a drink and take a break. The police are back on her tail. Aqua Orange jumps onto her car as the police rush to catch her. She trips down the hatch as the two police bump into each other. She sees a chance to escape as the police knock down each other. Police HQ sends out a high-speed pursuit unit. Camera POV in the pursuing car, looking toward at the pursuit car. Camera POV over the driver's side mirror of the pursuit car, looking backward at the pursuing car. Both cars head toward a street intersection. Aqua Orange initiates a drift along a tight turn. She makes the turn just to subsequently run into a set of locomotive trucks, thereby sending her flying through the windshield. 
Why there is a set of locomotive tracks on the road remains unknown, but we do get direct credits over the trajectory of Aqua Orange as she flies. Enter the download section. The left column is tools for the game. The right column is items for modifications. Download button leads to an item preview page. If you like what you see, click download to download the item in zipped package. Inside the zipped package are the item and a readme package. Inside the readme package are a preview picture again and instructions in English and in Chinese. No one back then spent as much effort as I did making bilingual game mod instructions in color with step-by-step -step illustrations, in addition to a website exclusively for that purpose. I did so because I hoped by making the modding process easier and more efficient, more gamers will be motivated to install those neat mods in the already great GTA game, thereby spreading fun. The joke image section contains land funny, now not so funny screenshots that are added to make it funny. It's funny how seriously I cheated in the game, and on the section banner I said do not cheat. I had already been a joke myself back then. I'll start with the oldest post and comment a little bit as I go. You can pause the video to read the text on the image that probably don't make any sense. I was so fascinated by the fact that the process of swapping cars was rendered with such lifelike animation. I made this comic highlighting how less efficient it was getting in and out when compared to Interstate 82. What's so special about this picture? It was a huge deal that someone figured out a way to let players go high up in the sky. Even revisit the rooftop garden shown in a car scene, inaccessible to players during gameplay. You got to know that players were mostly limited to the ground in driving based games of land. It's no longer true because after the year 2015, we mostly drive in the sky in video games. The fact that I could drive on train tracks was a concept so refreshing. I post a screenshot celebrating it. My name is Moron. This is what I learned in ESNL of USNA. Please no telling my parents. If they know, I will be executed. The fact that I could stand on a car and let it carry me around was something I never experienced before, so I post a screenshot advertising it. The title The Song of Old Jokes was inspired by the 2002 movie The Song of Old Fears, and it totally, like, nailed me. The fact that there is even a remote control toy car I could drive in addition to any real car in the fake world was a surprise so surprising. I'm I will use cheats to make the game behave funny, take a screenshot, edit it, and post it to make fun of it. I pissed off a Yakuza and jumped onto a car which carried me around the city, leaving Yakuza chasing behind me persistently. Never bring a foot to a wheel fight. Yes, it does happen every day, and it gets crazier in the next decade. This one's cute, I don't dislike. This is a long one, I'll just read the subtitles, not that Yakuza here refers to the character Asuka. Ground the boat by making the waiter angry, and then leave the boat. Make Maria and Asuka mad by punching them, yet not too hard. Then they start fighting and chasing you. In this example, Asuka fell into the river as jumping from the boat, said, Oh, that hurts. She's been following me for a couple of blocks, hasn't she? It goes without saying that Maria is pretty tough. She's crossed this island, and even the makeup bridge where game characters have never been to. There are a few coasts where you can ground a boat and conduct funny business. Check it out, it's so fun. It's not how game plays you, it's how you play the game. Huh? The 2000 movie Old oh Brother Where Are Thou was a feature film in one of my ESL level 4 classes as listening practice as the dialogue of the story era was simple. However, the only dialogue I understood with ease was when the key GTA into the bomb and shout because the key verb was spelled out for me. This idea is actually practical. Sometimes I feel games with minor cosmetic glitches are adorable because they challenge my perception of reality. Sometimes I will learn a thing or two if not making me more creative. Well, guess book is no more. I have to tell you I told you so, but I told you so. And lastly, the link section. This is where I got the most of my resources. 
Those in the center are where I got individual maps from. Those to the right are my friends' website. This is the banner of my GTA fan site that people can use on their site to link to my site. As you can see, backland website banner was a thing. This is a promotional banner for my personal website. Mm, it's cute, but weird. To the past me, no, you will not make it until the summer of 2005. After you did make it in 2005, your website will not go beyond 2009. Lastly, a few fan-made radio soundtracks that I still keep. I don't have any credit information for those soundtracks. The only info I have is DJ Glossy for Red Down Radio. Ein wunderschönen guten Morgen hier bei Red Down Radio. Ihr hört die nächste I had listened to it so many times that I could mimic a conversation between the DJ and the caller without knowing what's being said in German. I have a funny memory about this mother f***ing radio station. Neuer Tag, neues Glück, neuer Radiosender, mother f***ing radio station. I imported this mother f***ing radio station to my real card in the real world as crazed on everything GTA related. Until one day, a classmate rode alone. She never rode with me again. So, that's how my craze over GTA got started, and some memory coming along with it. If you are young enough to have played the original game right around the time when it was released, tell me you don't feel nostalgic. In the comment section below, let you don't feel nostalgic. I will sincerely doubt it, but I won't do anything about it.